From the American Riviera in Santa Barbara, California, it's Ken Boxer Live with your host, Ken Boxer, and co-host, two-time Olympian Ty Babylonia. Please welcome Ken and Ty. Thank you. Wow. Yay! What a great group of people. Bravo. Wow. And welcome to Ken Boxer Live. And of course, I have to introduce my lovely co-host, the very talented ice skater, two-time Olympian, not enough. She's also the five-time <laughs> national champion as well as a world champion, Ty Babylonia. Thank you, Ken. Thank, Thank you. you. I love having you here. Thank you so much. How was your week? Um, it was great. It, you know, not too much happening, but I have to tell you that drive from, as I call it, crazy town, my hometown of Los Angeles, once I see the water from the freeway, and I'm in Santa Barbara, Montecito. It's like I'm, I'm breathing again. So You're I just coming back home. Yeah, it's Barbara. so hard for me to go back home from here. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. tell us, tell our audience, who is on our show tonight? Oh, Ken, I am so excited. Tonight we have an idol of mine, Olympic silver medalist Tim Wood. But yes, yes, Tim Wood, of amazing, course. amazing. But I have a great story which my mom reminded oh, me by of. By all means, go ahead. Um, when I started. The real reason I started was because of Peggy Fleming. I saw her on television. She skated like a butterfly. She was very floaty and elegant and just gorgeous. But my mom reminded me that I wanted, I saw him on TV and she I think I just, I pointed and said, Mom, I want to jump like Tim Wood. So Tim Wood is in the house tonight. Don't go away, we'll be right back. We promise. Yay! Ben Boxer Live. Brought to you in part by DCH Lexus of Santa Barbara, providing Santa Barbarans and surrounding locations with prestigious luxury cars, SUVs, and hybrid vehicles. American Riviera Bank. Feel good about your bank. Wendy Foster, Santa Barbara and Montecito's premier clothing store. Now back to Ken Boxer Live. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, all right. And we are back with us tonight, one of the most prolific ice skaters in the history of the sport. With us is the former American figure skating champion, Tim Wood. His championships and awards are numerous. From 1962 through 1970, Tim Wood dominated the men's ice skating competitions. He was a multiple national champion, a world champion, and an Olympic champion. Let's welcome to our show a true champion, Tim Wood. Thank you, sir. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, sir. All those alliterations Yay. of yeah, champions. I'm tired just thinking about it. Thank you so much for being here, Tim. Thank you. Honey. Oh my gosh. It's so great to see you. My gosh, I haven't seen you in so long. I know, I know. Look Does at she this. look fantastic uh, or what? Absolutely, yes. No. Beautiful. No, I, I think that's, you know, I think that's a good thing about being on ice all the time. You know, you, you know what they you do? They, they say that. They say yeah. we're, we are well preserved because we were in the ice rinks, you know, for, for decades in the cold. And we all look pretty good. Peggy, Dorothy Hamill, Randy, you, we look pretty good. I don't what, know about you, but I'm getting old. She gets younger looking, <laughs> well, doesn't she? She does, yes. I mean, if well, you go, you. if you look at yeah. our shows just about six months ago to today, she looks yeah. younger. Oh, please, stop. <laughs> you do, how did you two first about meet? Me. Seriously, how did you two yeah, first meet? Yeah, I was trying to think well, when. I, I think just from the national championships, you know, it, it, you have to remember that See, Ty and Randy were the new up-and-coming kids, so, you know, I was like, good going, you guys, get out there and do it. You know, Scott yeah. Hamilton was another one who was the same thing. He was the new up-and-coming, so I we think know I each other for a long, and your mom, of course. And your my mom, mom. Is, but I think we saw you. Your mom is infamous in the, in the sport. Yes. Everybody loves yes. your mom. So. Beautiful skating yeah. mother. But I think I saw you in capades. Oh, really? Probably. Ice capades. Ice right. capades. Ice probably 71, 72, or sorry, 72, probably. Yeah. Something, yeah. Uh, yeah, see, I started and in Ice Capades for, what, three years? Yeah. No, two years. And then I went to Ice Follies and did their Vegas show in right. Caesars Palace. You had a great Which was phenomenal. That, being in Vegas was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I did two years of Holiday on Ice. And what really killed them was that I was receiving paychecks from all three companies at the same time. Nice. They, didn't like, <gasps> they didn't like that at all. The manager was really? like, here's one from Ice Capades, here's one from Holiday on Ice, here's from Ice Follies. I went, yes. Well, do, you, do you remember the first time you saw Ty and Randy? In terms of, 
recognition, like seeing them in the newspaper, on television? Um, how did you first come about well, to recognize Well, I mean, we all remember Ty and Randy at the Olympic Games in Lake Placid, and we were all sitting there waiting for you to go out mm -hmm. and win the championship, right? And poor Randy and had the problem, happen. and it didn't happen. But right. Of course, all of our hearts went out to you guys because we've loved you for so many years. Thank right? you, thank you. But she's one of the great. Not you know what the, the great thing about Ty and Randy too is not only are they fantastic champions and beautiful skaters, but they're such lovely people. I mean, they just mm -hmm. are warm, great. And we have we Randy see? on the show in oh, good. December. Good. In December. Good. Oh, good, yes. good, good, good. He's Randy come. will be fun. But really I have a question. Fun. Thank okay. you. <laughs> about when you started. And I read this on Wikipedia, so it's, okay. you take it with a grain of salt. I'm but not it, sure I can remember that from <laughs> But it, well, let's, I'll take you back. Okay, you were, take you me were back. three years old when you three. started, right which is really three. young. Yeah. Um, how was that? Did you take to the ice right away? Did you see someone on television? Well, well, my dad was a surgeon. My dad was a thoracic surgeon. Okay. And one of his uh, other hospital uh, devotees mm -hmm. asked him to come join the club. So okay. I have three older brothers. So my dad thought it would be great for us to all belong to the Detroit Skating Club. So we joined, and I was okay. three at the time. Now I don't remember any of that, of course, but right. I'm told that I had white <laughs> skates <laughs> because that's all they were in those right. days. Right, yeah. And I used to push a chair around the ice because Which they still do. You know, Kids I was only still three, do that. so, you know, there's not much uh, muscle there. So, wow. you know, push a chair around the ice. And, and before the show. I don't show, think I really remember anything about skating no, until I was like five or six. But you, know, you I, said I before the show yeah. that... From the beginning, you knew right away that this was something that you wanted to do. I yeah, I was a pretty natural athlete I, in a lot of different sports. I, I did high jumping and pole vaulting and swimming and diving and all the regular things. Gymnastics, I did a fair amount of gymnastics. Uh, but skating had something about it that right from the very beginning had. I think it was the movement, the amount of energy, the amount of uh, power that you could generate in skating was uh, was really great. And for me. Jumping was everything. I know that's a big controversy today about the jumping and the triples well, and quads, yeah. but I just, I love getting up in the air. And I had so my hip beautiful. replaced in December, so I can't jump anymore. So I, I put the headphones on, I come down the ice, and I just, I just want to jump up there, but I'm not allowed to do that but anymore. But you still would do it if you could? Oh, if I could. I, I was jumping 30 <laughs> days, 30, 40 days before I had my hip replaced. Oh, really? The doctor That's was crazy. like, are you crazy? You are crazy. I am crazy. And what was your Dick beautiful, what was your crazy, beautiful wife, wife, though? Pardon me? Taffy, what, what was she saying when you were still jumping right before your surgery? Oh, I mean, she knows I'm crazy. I mean, she's been <laughs> living with me for a long time. We met in high school. Can you imagine? I was I had, a senior. She was a junior. She came mm -hmm. in in the middle of the year in December. And our first date, honest to God truth, I mean, this is a little insipid, but our first date was the Sweethearts Dance on Valentine's Day. Our first date. Your first was, date. Was the Valentine's That's Day. That's romantic. Wow. That's romantic. And you've been married how long? I'm not supposed to tell. Oh, come on. A long time. A long time. Long time. It's, okay, it's well, a great marriage. And it's been a long time since the Olympic Games of 68. It is a long time. Okay. Yeah. We, you brought a, we have a clip you brought okay. of your competition. Okay. Um, you want to just give us some background of that day, what up to that day where you're And where I, you're I see? also, sorry to interrupt, before, you know that, that half hour before we get out there. Yeah. We all have different. We die. <laughs> well, it's nerve-wracking, but we all have a different way of getting in that zone. Sure. And I would love to know what you did to, you know, focus and, and really I, concentrate. I, I, you know, I think I had a whole system that I sort of got cerebral, and mm -hmm. that's where I lived and just kept running it through my brain. But I Visualizing. Was visualizing, uh -huh. of course, before that became popular. Right. I mean, but I was told by some competitors I saw uh, years later, like maybe 20 years later, and they said, you used to freak us out in the dress room. I go, what was that? Why? They said, well, you used to go stand on your head in the corner with your feet up in the air. And he said, you want it in the dress room. He said, you're standing on your head. We're all driving around you crazy. Really? I, I said, well, I was trying to get some blood to my head so I wouldn't freak well, out. It, 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 kept it, it, it kept you calm. It worked. It worked. It worked. Whatever Something it was, it worked. Let's, yeah. let's watch. Yay. Okay, Tim Wood, 1968 Olympic Games. Let's Love watch. This.
Yeah. It's so debonair. So you are even... watching Tim <gasps> Wood on Ken Boxer Live. Ty. <laughs> I have so much to ask. Um, controversy yeah. with this uh, Olympics. Yes. Um, you could have won that. Can you tell us what really happened? Well, they actually what, what thought really that I did win it. Which was, so wait, when you finished In it, other words, when I came off, the, there was one more skater after me. Right. Uh, Wolfgang Schwartz. I remember. Who ended up winning from, from Austria. Yes, okay. I remember that. And uh, afterwards, uh, his marks came up. Right. And everybody came over and they picked me up, all the American Association, oh, and I'm God. up and like, oh, you're Olympic champion, all that guy. <gasps> and then my coach, of course, he was always the bearer of good tidings, right? right. You know how the coaches are. Yes. And he came up, we have a problem. That was, what happened was the... Canadian judge had made a mistake and he wrote the mark down and he actually wanted me to win. Yes. But in uh, the Olympic Games is factor 12 and the World Championships is a factor of 10. No, uh, no, Olympic Games is a factor of 10, World Championships is a factor of 12. Okay. So you take the mark and multiply it times that. Okay. Well, if you only have a factor of 10, you don't have enough margin. Okay. So he gave me the wrong mark. He wanted me to win, but he gave me the wrong mark. So he put it down on paper. In those days, once mm -hmm. you put it on paper, you couldn't change well, it. How did you now, know after that, that Olympics, that? well, the reason I knew that was because he went to the referee and asked and said, I made a mistake. I need to change this mark. Oh. And they couldn't do it. Oh, that's too bad. So what's crazy about it, you know, when you, the, the whole Olympic Games, I think the total number of marks when they add everything up is probably 1,357. So it's like 1357.01 and 1357.00. Oh. And you become a silver medalist instead of a gold. I mean, look, that's crazy. See, I didn't know, I didn't know the details that of that. What's the karma of that? That's crazy. But really, once you're out there, it's, it's out of our hands. Yeah. And you really just want to go out and skate your yeah. best. There was a picture on the front of Life magazine, uh, or not on the front, in the Life magazine article of all of us Olympians. And I, I still have that picture. Mm -hmm. And it was a picture of me coming around the ice, and I'm sort of like in this swan dive kind of thing, sorry. <laughs> and I had this most relaxed, comfortable smile on my face. And I looked at it and went, oh my God, I can't believe I was that relaxed in the Olympic Games, right? You know. Well, you were but so that's well trained. Training. That's training. You were so yeah, well trained and prepared. I had read, though, that your scores, your marks, are still the highest in, in competition? In, in compulsory figures. Still. To yeah, they don't do compulsory figures anymore. Okay. Uh, they cut those out, I think, almost 20 years ago, which is one of the big problems of the sport today in terms of technical skill. Uh, so I have the highest marks of both men and women for all time in world Olympics or anything. So <laughs> I'm sort of <laughs> I'm enfranchised in. So I love But that. we're trying to bring figures back so that but we hope to be able to What would that. happen if you were on the skate today back then, in other words, you took your, yourself in the prime and skated with the best of today, where would you fit? Do you, have, you ever think about that when you're watching the Olympic Games? Well, it's a completely different sport today. Yeah. And you can, that's like apples and oranges yeah. because today everything is based upon the point structure, uh, meaning every jump, every spin, every piece of footwork has a point structure to it. And that's a problem because the unintended consequence of that is, it's uh, the way I say it, it's, it's, remember when we were in biology class and they gave no. you a frog <laughs> and you had to dissect the frog? Well, at the end of your finishing dissecting the frog, it's not a frog anymore, is it? Right. Well, that's what skating's like now. They've dissected it down into such minute pieces that when you put the pieces back together. This is a whole together, conversation. Right. This is it's a whole another whole show, conversation. But that's another whole show, but that's you know, true. Yeah, well, let's go there. Ties are very critical. Of the skating industry. Well, well are, all, most all of us of from us our are. vintage are because and we come from a different school. So my you know? question is, yeah. if you were to make any changes yeah. in the world of figure skating, we know what happened at the, the last Olympics. We know it's on a, it's, let's just say it's not great right now. What would you change if you were? Wait, what do you mean by great? You're talking about viewership? You're yeah, about everything. About everything. The, everything. Is financially, there are things that have gone on mm -hmm. in the sport recently that, for instance, the European Championships could not even get a television sponsor. That right. the Vancouver Olympics, they papered half of the house. That means they right. gave oh. tickets. Now, the women's. But Ty was asked, and I'm sorry to interrupt on that question, okay. but Ty was asking, what would you, what would you do differently? What would, yeah, you change? what would you change? So I think what has to happen is we have to come up with a better product. See, figure skating is competing against all the other sports at the Olympics, plus it's competing against other uh, 
entertainment venues like Dancing with the Stars, so you think you can dance all the dance programs. Right. So I, I do believe that many of the people who used to watch figure skating have shifted over to the dance programs. I mean, that viewership now is like 60 million people watch those shows, where that used to be figure skating. Um, so they've made figure skating a technical you know, point structure thing, and they've left, they've, they've left the artistic. So, so we need to go back to the artistic. And you're saying that's for the demise of viewership is because of this? Well, Could I think it, there's it, two it, things there's going on there. It. There's more to it. Technically, the talent today does not, well, I, I worked with one of Canada's number one athletes, Elvis Toyko, oh, okay, for a okay. year, okay? And when I started working with him, now he's a four-time world champion and a two-time Olympic silver medalist. When I came to work with him, because he was having technical jumping problems, when I came to work with him, I had to take him back to the very first jump you would learn if you were five years old, the Walsh jump. Back to basic. Back to the basic and build it all back up again. Now, the cool thing is when you take somebody of that talent and you give him that structure, he goes vertical. I sure. mean, it's, it's spectacular. People were like, what just happened, okay? That's the point. They don't have the technical skills. Well, where do the technical skills come? You have to go back to the basics. Compulsory school figures. That's where every, see, every edge, every jump, every spin that you do from skating is all based on school figures because the school figures teach the body how to work certain things, shoulder against the hip while the knee is working at an edge. There's like 10 things happening just to do a simple edge. Well, if you don't train the body to do that, it gets more and more complicated as you get up. What you have today is nobody's doing any of that, and they're all doing quads and triples. Well, it's, it's, so there, a lot of difficult. It's all about the quick fix. That's right. And it's not being it's, it's not being about being a great athlete anymore. It's who's going to get on Dancing with the well, Stars the, and who's going to get the commercial endorsement. Well, it's the all thing, about money. Yeah, but the thing is, is see, everybody knows that whoever has the most points wins. So all the coaches go and figure out what is the program that has the most points. Well, everybody comes up with the same program because everybody can calculate those points. So every program looks exactly like the same. It's like, okay, this is boring. By the way, there's not one triple, one double, one quad, or triple combination in Dancing with the Stars, not one. And they have 60 million people watching it. Right. So right. obviously something has left the sport, well, let's and it's the artistic side. So okay. we're doing that. Well, and we're going to enlist you to come help us. Oh, there you go. There See, you go. We're going to get more employment for you. We're going to get more people. employment for you. Okay, great. Okay, let's show people, though, yeah. another clip. Okay. The, or the real artistic side Okay. Okay. of, of skating. Let's yeah. watch another clip. Tim Wood. And I was there for this. It starts the day you came. Well, certainly all the old elegance and athletic ability and smoothness on the ice is still right there. He's only practiced a few months for this performance after not skating for such a long time. Tim Wood. Yeah, some brief moment here in Indianapolis. 16 years after his world championship, he's blown the roof off Market Square Arena. That's amazing. Tim Wood, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ken Boxer live. So Hi. awesome. Uh, well, first of all, you are in incredible shape. Oh, thank what you. did it take? You know, were you skating every day to get in that kind of shape? Well, no, I was a businessman. I had not done anything professionally for, I think, almost 10 years. Okay. So I was goaded. I wasn't going to do it, but people kept calling, you've got to do it, you've got to do it. Right. So right. I, I, you know, strapped them back on and got back out there for six. Well, you know, I don't get away from the gym, and I did skate a little bit, but I started back in training. Because they didn't show the end of this, but at the end, you acknowledged well, your this, beautiful wife, this, Kathy. I had another whole program choreographed, another whole piece of music. And I was oh. and I was training it in Burbank at Pickwick. Uh, right. And I, I was driving that. home, and I heard this song on the radio by Neil Diamond called yes. "The Story of My Life." Yeah. And I listened to the lyrics, and it was the story of my life with my wife, who I met in high school. Uh, and I wanted sweet. to <laughs> dedicate. So I told I Doug Wilson. That. I told Doug Wilson, the uh, the producer of it, 
that right. uh, when you can't skate anymore, you have to sell romance, right? <laughs> so well, it worked. It worked. Well, yeah, standing it worked. ovation, he brought the house down, was, bottom it line. It was fun. It was a lot it of fun. It was your night. Let me ask you, Tim, though. Yeah. Has there ever been a time in all these years when you were skating, you just kind of said, I'm just going to hang them up. I am just can't get on that cold, square surface, uh. and I am just tired of it. <laughs> no, it's, it keeps changing for me. You know, now I can't do the jumping anymore because the doctor won't let me do it. So now it forces me into doing even more of that edge work that we used to do, yeah. where the edges doing things. And so what I do is I put the headphones on and I find some good music and I just let my it goes from my ears to my feet, and I, I sort of go along for the ride. Mm -hmm. The little kids go, who's the old ball guy? He's pretty good. <laughs> well, how, do, how are you able to survive? It's so expensive to... Um, I told you, know, you my father was a doctor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, was he... Oh, the, right. Yeah, yeah, my father was a doctor. Well, you had to deal and he had four boys, so we all... And things yes. to just, yeah, but back it's then... An and those are, so you, we no, we allowed. were amateurs. We were never allowed to take... We a, you couldn't take amateurs. a penny. You couldn't right. take a gift from someone because you would be kicked out immediately. Now you can make 50 million bucks. And, well, that's where, that's and, and where still, I think there's a problem. Well, what that's would it problem. cost an Olympian like yourself well, I, to, I raise, for a year? I raised money to for a, a, a young man who trained over here, David Liu, and I raised, uh, I think it was $125,000 for the year for him to go to all the different competitions, his equipment, his training, you know, so on. That's about what it is. You know, that's expensive. It's very, that's it's, very expensive. It, uh, so and how much was it back then when you were doing it? Well, I mean, it's a different dollar, time, but, it, but it's in, probably it's, the same. You know, I mean, I, I was just telling you, I, I ordered a new pair of boots so I can get figure boots going. In right. So right. the boots are now eight fifty just for the boot. They're hand last leather boot, and the blade is six fifty. So in those days, I think it would maybe be a hundred bucks or one hundred fifty bucks. I don't know. In those days, my dad paid. Let me just chime in a little bit why I think there's been a demise. Good. I'd right. like to hear that. And, and it ha I think it has to do with the familiarity of, you don't see a Jim McKay or hear a True. Jim McKay or a, um, a Dick good. Button True. or um, a Chris Shankle That's right. for ABC. That's ABC. You don't That's have that right. anymore. Well, yeah. we have, you know, how many channels do, you, do we have? Well, play Disney bought too? ABC Wireless Sports, and so their sports channel is ESPN now, so they don't want ABC to come out. So we don't have those, we don't have those color commentators who are, so the combination wonderful. of we don't have a color commentator and we really don't have any big stars. We don't have names that we remember like Michelle Kwan, right? I mean, you just sit back and, right. you know, you, she just took you someplace. I mean, it was yeah. phenomenal. You, Dorothy you, Hamill. Dorothy Hamill. Peggy, Peggy Fleming. Fleming. This yeah, little girl, Ty she and Ty and Randy were the same way. <laughs> and Are you kidding? Well, People what just sat there and watched how beautiful you Thank were. Why no? Used to love. Thank Why you. don't we have ice capades anymore? Money. Well, that's right. It's, it's all money. It's all money. Yeah. Yeah. Economy. Yeah. You both started. But how? I mean, now capade. I realize how lucky we were yeah. and appreciate. I'm able to appreciate what we had. Yes, it was hard. Ice capades was hard was for hard me work. at least. Hard work. It was hard work. Nine yeah. months on the road and but ten shows a week. There, you know, kids don't have any kids. Whatever they don't have. Anything after they're got done competing, there's one show. There's two shows. There's Disney on Ice, yeah, and Stars on Ice. And Stars on Ice, mm -hmm. yeah. And which IMG had, and that's been sold now. So right. So it's we were so lucky. Yeah. 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 We, was it hard for you to have success early? Were you able to handle success? You know what? I, I think my family was, was, especially my dad, was extraordinary at that, at keeping it well balanced. Because mm -hmm. my dad used to say, look, if you don't get your education and you don't keep your grades up, all the skating goes away. I and mean, that was the number one thing. Wow. Uh, the other thing is I had three older brothers, and they were never going to allow me to, you know, <laughs> get pulled away into something, right? So I think the balance is what's so important. But it was a different day. You know, at different time now it's so competitive. I was thinking, uh, you know, I did those tour of champions after the world championship. And in those days, they couldn't. They gave you twelve dollars and fifty cents a day. You toured seventy dates through Europe Jeez. on a bus and a train and playing every day. You Moscow, you know, I mean, it was crazy for twelve dollars and fifty cents a day. Now they paid all your expenses, but we were playing in front of thirty, forty thousand people at fifty bucks a head. Where did that money go, right? Now, if you're a world champion, if I had my titles. It's fifty thousand dollars a night. Right. Hello. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> Let me get the hairpiece back on. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and the and the yeah. costumes are different. I mean, yeah. just, I'm just watching you. Right. I mean, yeah. even the men's costumes have changed. Yeah. See, in our day, it was uh, navy blue, black. That's it. Uh, there was no uh, no. Uh, Accoutrement, you know, gloves, no makeup, uh, hair, it all that really, kind of stuff. It was, it was strictly about the skating. And now I look yeah. at costumes and 
did you see Blades of Glory? <laughs> It's pretty close it's a, to, it's, you know, it's almost comical, some of the yeah. costumes, where the costumes are overshadowing yeah. the mediocre skating with some of the kids. And that, that you know, it's just something has to give. And I, what think they it, were, I think what they were trying to do is they were trying to go for the entertainment value of it, but now it's become all entertainment value with the skill level going down. And I don't think people in a, around the world... They're not taking it seriously. They, 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 no, Jim. that's why they're jumping over to... And we got to jump out of okay, here. Okay, it was great. It was it great. Goes it was by quick. It was fast. fast. All right. It was great fun. Thank I'm you so much so for having me. Come back. It was a real pleasure. Real pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that's Thank our show you, for Tim. tonight. Oh. Now, be sure, yes, to tune into our next show as we have Emmy Award winning director and writer Mark Stauffer joining us. I promise that show will be fun and very entertaining. Well, that's it for now. So, for our guest, Tim Wood. And for my co-host, Ty Babylonia and director George Montalvo and the entire KBL crew, I'm Ken Boxer saying that Ty and I will see you next time on Ken Boxer Live. Good night, everybody. Ken Boxer Live is brought to you by the following sponsors. DCH Lexus of Santa Barbara, providing Santa Barbarans and surrounding locations with prestigious luxury cars, SUVs, and hybrid vehicles. Palazzo Restaurant, where people don't leave hungry or thirsty. American Riviera Bank, feel good about your bank. Wendy Foster, Santa Barbara and Montecito's premier clothing store. Harborview Inn. Welcome to Santa Barbara's premier four diamond luxury boutique oceanfront hotel. Via Rosa Inn. Let us pamper you in international style. The Eagle Inn, a family owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. And by Taffy's Pizza. Delivery, pickup, or dine in. Los Arroyo's Mexican restaurant, takeout. Santa Barbara Chicken Ranch, authentic Mexican style, mesquite barbecue. Sammy's Camera, new location at 530 State Street. Rubicon Theater Company, not your typical season, not your typical theater company. Summer Lee, makeup artist, stylist, and esthetician. Go Sunless, custom airbrush tanning in your home or at their location. Perfect Computers, your local computer expert since 1990. The Ken Boxer Live musical theme composed and arranged by Mr. Michael J. Leslie.